In the thunderous rumble of modern warfare, where today's tanks effortlessly lock onto targets while cruising over rugged terrain, let's journey back to a time when precision was an art mastered through sheer skill and courage. Imagine the gritty reality of the Second World War, where tank gunners didn't have the luxury of digital aids. Instead, they relied solely on their eyes, their instincts, and the trusty optical instruments at their disposal. In an era defined by the crackle of gunfire and the whirl of metal beasts, success wasn't measured by fancy gadgets, but by the sharpness of aim and the depth of experience. Join us as we delve into the heart of World War II tank warfare, where every shot was a gamble and victory was forged through grit, determination, and unwavering courage. The optical aiming systems installed on German, Allied, and Soviet tanks varied significantly in their design and quality. Among these, German tanks stood out with multiple advantages in their gun sights. With meticulous design and unparalleled quality, German gun sights boasted advantages that set them apart from their counterparts. From wider fields of view to superior magnification, these optical marvels offered tank crews a crucial edge on the battlefield. Whether prowling the deserts of North Africa or the snow-covered plains of Eastern Europe, German tank gunners could rely on their sights to deliver accuracy and lethality when it mattered most. The German Panther, Tiger I, and Tiger II tanks boasted exceptional optical sighting instruments for their main gun, known as Tormziel Fernrohr, or TZF. Over the course of the war, various iterations of the TZF were introduced, each featuring specialized modifications aimed at improving performance. Designed by the renowned German optics manufacturer, Zeiss, these devices became synonymous with precision and excellence on the battlefield. Typically, the TZF was positioned to the left of the main gun, offering German tank gunners a distinct advantage, especially in long-range combat scenarios with clear, unobstructed views, Zeiss-designed gun sights revolutionized the way engagements were conducted. To grasp the significance of this advantage, let's delve into the technical intricacies and aiming mechanisms of German gun sights. German tanks enjoyed superior optical clarity thanks to their meticulous attention to the quality of their optical glass. Recognizing the pivotal role of lenses, Germany emerged as a global leader in lens research and development. Their remarkable discovery revealed that adding the rare earth element lanthanum to the glass substantially improved its clarity. Additionally, the sand and clay used in the glassmaking process were of exceptional quality. Another advantage held by the Germans was their development of a thin film lens coating that effectively minimized light reflection from the lens surface. This innovation allowed German tank optics to maintain clarity and precision even in challenging lighting conditions, giving their tank crews a crucial edge on the battlefield. During World War II, Germany utilized chemically inert argon gas, a practice that continues to this day, particularly in electrospray ionization. This technique facilitates the deposition of ultra-thin coatings. One of the significant advantages of this method is its cold procedure, eliminating the need to heat the film material. This aspect was crucial and contributed to its status as a military secret until after the war. The outcome of this process was remarkable. While light transmission typically incurred a loss of 4.2% per lens surface, the innovative coating reduced this loss to as little as 0.6%. Given that telescopic sights typically had 10 to 16 lenses, the reduction in light transmission loss should have a considerable cumulative effect. 
By minimizing light loss across multiple lenses, the German tank's optical systems achieved unparalleled clarity and brightness, providing their crews with a crucial advantage in combat situations. Innovations in German tank technology, particularly with newer models like the Panther and Tiger, included gun sights with adjustable magnifications. This feature proved incredibly relevant in combat situations, where the ability to adapt to varying engagement ranges was crucial. It's a common misconception that German tank sights had higher magnifications compared to those of the Allies. In reality, Allied optics were generally not inferior in terms of magnification when compared to German sights. Originally, the British two-pounder gun and associated tanks and anti-tank guns were equipped with a 1.9x magnified sight, which was indeed somewhat inferior to the 2.4x magnification found in German tank sights. American and British tank sights, such as those for the 6-pounder and 75mm guns, featured a 3x magnification, which was indeed slightly superior in zoom, compared to the 2.4x magnification found in German sights on tanks like the Panzer III and early Panzer IV. German tanks like the Panzer IV H and J, late Tiger I, Tiger II, and Panther, featured advanced optics, with selectable magnification powers of 2.5x or 5x. The field of view is inversely proportional to the magnification of an optical device. For Zeiss Design TZF gun sights, the specifications were as follows. At 2.5x magnification, the FOV was 28 degrees. At 5x magnification, the FOV reduced to 14 degrees. In comparison, Allied tank optics offered smaller FOV at similar magnification levels. For instance, at 3x magnification, Allied optics provided a FOV of 13 degrees. The Sherman Firefly's high-powered optics had a limited FOV of 9 degrees at 6x magnification. Only the Sherman 76 series with a 5x optics provided a comparable field of view of approximately 13 degrees, similar to the 5x magnification and 14 degree field of view of the German adjustable optics. Thus, the wider field of view provided by Zeiss tank optics compared to their allied counterparts offered a significant advantage for German tank gunners. This advantage translated into a higher likelihood of spotting distant targets before they could be spotted by the enemy. With their enhanced situational awareness, German tank crews could seize the initiative by firing the first shot, giving them a crucial edge in engagements. This tactical advantage not only increased their chances of successfully engaging enemy targets, but also contributed to their overall effectiveness on the battlefield. During World War II, hitting distant enemy targets with a tank gun demanded precise range estimation. Without advanced computerized fire control systems, tank gunners relied on quick and accurate range estimation using both mathematical calculations and tank optics to achieve success. The reticle of the Zeiss gun sights comprises two prominent features. The reticle includes three graduated range scales imprinted around the circumference of the lens. Each scale corresponds to a specific type of ammunition one for armor-piercing ammunition, one for high-explosive ammunition, and one for the coaxial machine gun. The reticle also features seven triangles, which are utilized for range finding. There are six small triangles and one large triangle. Their measurements are as follows. The numbers represent the lengths of the heights and bottom sides of the triangles, measured in milliradians or mils, which is one thousandth of a radian. Each small triangle measures 2 mils in height and bottom side. The large triangle measures 4 mils in height and bottom side, making it twice as large as a small triangle. Additionally, note the distances between the triangles. The significance of the distances in mils lay in their crucial role in determining the range of a target. 
When faced with an enemy tank, a German tank gunner would measure how many mils the tank occupied in his gun sight. Then, he would use the following formula to calculate the range. This formula was effective because the Allies and Soviets mass-produced a limited number of tank models throughout the war. Tanks such as the American-built Sherman and Stuart, British-built Cromwell and Churchill, and Soviet-built T-34, IS-2, and KV-1 were commonly encountered by the Germans. Many of these tanks were either destroyed or captured, allowing the Germans to meticulously measure their dimensions. These measurements were then used in the range calculating formula mentioned earlier, enabling German tank gunners to accurately determine the range to enemy targets on the battlefield. In the chaos of battle, there's no time to waste on calculating ranges. Every second counts, and firing quickly and accurately can mean the difference between life and death. To streamline this process, a method for swiftly calculating ranges was devised, the range tables. They were designed to provide rapid and reliable range estimates, allowing tank crews to engage targets without delay. For each type of tank encountered on the battlefield, the German army compiled a corresponding range table. These tables were meticulously crafted for tanks such as the Sherman, T-34, Char, Stuart, and others, providing essential data for quickly and accurately estimating ranges during combat engagements. As you can see, these range tables contain multiple entries, each mapping the dimensions, length, width, and height of a specific tank type to a corresponding measurement in mils. The reason is that the orientation of an enemy tank resulted in three different views for a German tank gunner, and each view could correspond to different ranges. These are head-on, sideway, and diagonal views. Depending on the view of the enemy tank, the corresponding dimension from the range table had to be used to determine the range. Width was used for the head-on view, length was used for the sideways view, and height was used for the diagonal view. In the head-on view, when the T-34 measured 4 mils in the gun sight, it corresponded to a range of 750 meters. However, in the sideways view, the same length of 4 mils translated to a longer range of 1,500 meters. After determining the range, the final step was to dial the range to adjust the superelevation. Superelevation involves raising the barrel of the main gun to a firing angle higher than the direct line of sight to the target. This compensates for gravitational effects, ensuring the projectile reaches the target accurately. The amount of superelevation needed depends on factors such as the muzzle velocity and ballistic coefficient of the projectile. Higher muzzle velocity requires less superelevation. However, regardless of the range, the aiming point always remains the tip of the large triangle. But, in practice, the position of the gun sight to the left of the gun meant that the gunner would need to make a slight adjustment to the aim point. This adjustment ensured that the projectile would hit the target at the desired point, compensating for the offset between the gun sight and the gun itself. In comparison, American optics were relatively simple, if not primitive. They typically consisted of a line down the middle with crossing lines representing 400-yard intervals. Unlike the German optics, American sights were non-adjustable and required the gunner to line them up directly on the enemy tank for aiming. British optics on their post-2 pounder arm tanks shared similarities with American optics in that they included all the ranges listed in the sight. However, they had the advantage of being adjustable, which mitigated the limitations of the non-adjustable US optics. Before the war, the Soviets acquired an obsolete Zeiss plant and technology, although the resulting sights produced were only of adequate quality. Rifle sights made with this machinery appeared by 1932. However, the cooperation between the Germans and Russians soured, leading to the end of their military collaboration by the end of 1933. 
early Soviet sites were indeed better designed than early U.S. and British sites. According to a Russian report citing an unsubstantiated U.S. report, which should be approached with caution due to its hearsay nature, the sites on the T-34 tanks sent to the United States were regarded as the best constructed sites some engineers at Aberdeen had ever seen. With the aid of the simple aiming mechanism and range tables, coupled with the high-velocity main gun, German gunners achieved remarkable accuracy compared to their Soviet and Allied counterparts. Highly skilled gunners often hit the target with the first round, at ranges between 1,000 and 2,000 meters, far beyond the effective range of Allied and Soviet tanks. This superior accuracy played a crucial role in the success of German armored operations on the battlefield. On open battlefields with unobstructed views, the Tigers and Panthers held superiority. Their long-range guns and excellent optics allowed well-trained German gunners to easily target and eliminate enemy tanks with impunity. This combination of firepower and precision rendered German armored units highly effective in engagements where distance and clear visibility were advantageous. Even the enemy recognized the superior quality of German optics. In Armored Firepower, the development of tank armament 1939 to 1945, Peter Gudgeon remarked on the quality of Zeiss tank sites. The German telescopic sites deserve special attention for their greater convenience to the gunner, their ability to reduce vulnerability, and the sheer quality of their design and manufacture. This excellence reflected the advanced optical industry of Germany, which was considered the most advanced in the world at that time. In T-34 in action, the authors described Russian tankers' admiration of German optical gun sights. All the tank crew members interviewed expressed admiration for the gun sights of German tanks. One of them noted, We always noted the high quality of the Zeiss gun sight optics. They maintained that high quality till the end of the war. We had nothing like that. The gun sights themselves were more convenient than ours. We had a triangle in the crosshairs and hairlines left and right. They had corrections for wind, distance, and so on. All in all, Zeiss design tank gun sights were of high quality, providing excellent field of view and clarity. They were user-friendly and effective in combat situations, allowing German gunners to accurately determine target ranges. When paired with long-range, high-velocity guns, they contributed to superior anti-tank performance, establishing the well-deserved reputation of the German Big Cats.